Do you want to say anything about your experience of doing that? Well, it's been an experience of um, what I've talked about, um, lots of doubting, lots of doubting of myself in the sense of um, just feeling impelled to step back, to step back and step back in my mind. And um, What impelled you? No, it, w it wasn't anything external. I mean, that's the the thing. It, it's been like a calling from, from within, from deep within, that um, has been like just reminding me that there's something more than all of this. That um, just a real disillusionment with with. Uh, having tried so many different pathways and, and and thought out so many external things that I thought would help bring meaning to my life that didn't do it. And um, in a sense, I mean, one metaphor could be like like wheels, like in like a lot of the old watches had all these different wheels going in it. And if you can think of them as having um, different diameters or circumferences and you know you're being like wheels inside of wheels inside of wheels that um, in a sense of stepping back it's, it's like hopping out and, and noticing that you were on a wheel you were pursuing something that was a very circular that <laughs> that just didn't get you where you thought it would where you thought it or would or hoped it would you, know, you just kept going round and round and and then Seeing that, then you, there's a sense of stepping back, and it's like being able to see the wheel, and, and see like, boy, that was a, a, a circle. I just kept going round and round and round. I wasn't, there was nothing, um, there was no sense of satisfaction or fulfillment in that wheel. And then, being on another wheel, but not knowing it, <laughs> and then going deeper into, oh, what am I pursuing now? Whether it's you know, possessions or a specific kind of a relationship or a specific kind of job or career, specific kind of a climate, you know, that's most desirable to live in, um, associating with specific kind of people, the more feeling more valuable, more alive with these people than with those mm -hmm. people. Specific kinds of activities, pastimes, yes. Activity. entertainment, enjoyment. Right. Um, and the body involved in so many different ways. Um, body, skills, intelligence, ability, improvement. Just wanting to improve and improve. And and just stepping back on the wheel, kind of on another wheel and stepping back and and kind of stepping out, outgrowing a, a wheel and then outgrowing another wheel and then outgrowing another wheel. Until, I mean, as one goes along, I experienced just this call, this, this pull backwards to go back, back, back in the mind and to start to really question my values. You know, if I'm, if I'm in a search for meaning in life, wherever I searched, you know, religion, science, and um, politics, I mean, you can, you can search entertainment to try to find, you know, that that variety of entertainment or that particular thing that will will do it. And and it's like just seeing that, that that's not it. No, that's not it either. That's not it. Just stepping back further and further leads one into metaphysics, leads one into beyond the physical, mm -hmm. leads one into the study of the mind and how the mind works and how, what is perception and emotion and thoughts, beliefs, assumptions, so forth. And even that is, is just something that has to be stepped back from too. I mean, in the sense of, of studying the mind as if 
you can objectify it. Objectify the mind as something other than. Uh, ultimately, there just comes this pull and this awareness to to leap from that subject-object split. That if, even if I am able to talk about the mind, you know, and describe it and everything, but still, you know, see see it as something objective, then mm-hmm. once again, I, I, there's still that split I'm still talking about. But there's a state of being which it's a, just a recognition of what is. And in, in a metaphorical sense, it you know it is not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It's the sense of, of dualness disappears. There's not a, a sense of objectifying behavior. The question, you know, what shall I do? You know, should I do this or should I do that? And all the weighing of pros and cons and the analyzing and everything stops. And from that clear intention, from that clear purpose, everything else follows from it. Spirit is is placed at the center. Spirit is valued. Is, is the attention is placed on the spirit or the voice for God or the intuition or however you know you want to talk about it. But there's such a focus and such an intention on that that everything else follows from that. There is no focus and attention put on the construct anymore, but simply on that intention to stay in the mind, stay in the witness and the observer um, mode, if you will. So in that state, there's no need to even, in a sense, struggle over decisions. It's more that the decisions are made, but it's just all kind of unfolds effortlessly, and it's just all part of the the overall flow of things. Yes, decisions... um, There's a great line in the Course, a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. And, you know, once you step back, once you begin to see that the beliefs are part of the construct, then you step back deeper and deeper and deeper to a point that's behind, behind and beyond the beliefs. That literally, there's an abstraction there's just a state of being that is literally beyond belief, that is beyond thought form associations and beyond constructs. And and there is rest in that state. There is contentment. There is no alternative in that state of being. There is nothing to choose between. Well, that's the atonement, right? It's when it's you get to that, when when you arrive at that state, as it were. It just is, yes. Yeah. When you can see that there are no alternatives, really. That's seeing the construct as a construct. Mm-hmm. That's seeing that there is nothing outside of me. That seeing and really understanding that ideas, ideas leave not their source. The world was an idea in my mind, and it, it did not leave its source. That mm-hmm. the, the subject-object disappears. I mean, there's a, there's a, in a sense of joining, an awareness of, of the connectedness and join so that that um, those constructs and differences, body and hand and leaf and tree and, you know, butterfly and so on and so forth, that that there is just one, that it, it is all just one. 
the, the construct, the fabric of the time-space universe is seen as a, a single fabric. There aren't particular threads that are discerned or separated out as standing out and more valuable, more important, less important, categorizing, organizing, analyzing, dissecting. All that has stopped. All that, that was a defense against the state of being against the fact of what is. Just seeing all the little pieces you're saying is the the mind's defense against seeing the totality. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep focusing on individual pieces, it's kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. And as long as you keep focusing on individual pieces to be put into the jigsaw puzzle you don't have the whole puzzle, or even when the whole puzzle is completed, if you zone in on per a particular piece, you can't see the overall picture that's created by having all the pieces side by side. Yes, the, the, the pieces, I mean, imply um, subject and object. Mm -hmm. I mean, to even talk about parts, we're, we're back down into duality and mm -hmm. multiplicity. Mm -hmm. And um, once again, to even see the whole fabric, it's not like seeing it as a person or seeing it through the body's eyes, of course, because there, there's the, du the multiplicity, the duality again. The body's eyes can't see the whole thing. Yeah. what you're saying. Right. But but metaphorically when I say see the fabric, that is a metaphor for that all is one. That there is no split between subject and object and observer and observed. There's nothing to defend in that state. There's because there's nothing to defend against. You need some duality to have a, an opposite or a, something to oppose or conflict with or whatever. So we're not when we say when I say see the, the construct or see the fabric work, we're talking about a, a state of being, an awareness uh, that is not a seeing in in the worldly sense. Of seeing. In the worldly sense, you know, you can you say, okay, I, I'm sitting, I'm standing here on the street, and I see the cars, and I see some of the buildings, and I can see, you know, there's some skyscrapers around, and then, for instance, the walking into the Empire State Building or whatever, and going up to the 15th floor and peering out one of the windows and say, oh, I see so much more. I can see further. I can see more buildings than I. Then I just saw, and then maybe going up to the 30th floor and saying, even more, I mean, I, I can see farther, I can look around, I can see, you know, the, all around the, the island of Manhattan and, and so forth and everything, and then going to the very top and looking over and just seeing the horizon and, and seeing a much different perspective. But this is not the seeing of the whole fabric, because this is still... Perspective, perceptual, perceptual and, and, and perhaps a broader perspective, mm -hmm. a different perspective each time it seems. More expansive perspective. Yes, it seems even more expansive. But it's still perceptual. But it's still perceptual. I mean, you could take that and someone, for instance, then going on in an airplane and flying over the top and, and see an even more expansive perspective. Then going up on the space shuttle and seeing the globe and seeing an even more expansive pers perspective. And then getting pictures back from a satellite that was sent to Mars. <laughs> and seeing an even more expansive. But these are all perceptual. These, all of these perspectives imply a personhood. I mean, all of